Hi, it's Jess here from iJess.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. So I made three pocket fronts and three tags out of some scraps. Okay, I made this ages ago. This has been in my, I really must film this pile um, for a while. Um, so here I am um, about to do it. So I just got a load of scraps. I stuck them down. Um, I did these onto white paper. I may well back these, well, not these ones that are going to be pockets, but the tags, I might well back these um, onto um, coffee dye paper or packaging paper. They're not quite stiff enough. I don't like the way that I kind of seem to want to do that. Um, so I think to stiffen these up, these would be backs, but for... For the pockets, I think they're absolutely fine. So that's nice size for um, a pocket on on a page, as is that one. So these are, it was a sheet of A4. And so I cut it in half, created those three pockets and then created tags out of what was left. So I'm going to show you how I did it. It was quite quick, quite easy quite straightforward so let me get some scraps okay so I looked through my scraps and um, I didn't seem to have very many I'm using um, current stamping up paper because I'm doing this for a blog hop and it has to be current I do have quite a lot of scraps that aren't from current paper but um, this appears to be all I've got so I've got hues of happiness there this is one of the Christmas papers. I can't remember what it's called. These are all my like colour families. There's lots of in colours there. And um, this is the a new harvest one I've used a bit of. So um, we'll see we'll see what we do. Let's just see what we do. So I've got a piece of A4. This is some tea dyed paper. So I'm going to attach it on to this. And all of these scraps, I did actually cut them into straight lines so i think we'll continue um, to do that with this so that's quite a big bit i might cut that up and then you can on these other bits we can create did that a bit because i didn't hold on Right, so let's do that. That's a nice bit there. This one. Just cut that down. It's uh... there. We go. Got a bit of a strip going on there. There we go. Not sure about these bits. So, yeah, so to begin with, I'm just going to, those are already in strips. I may well cut them down. So we're just having a look at what I've got and um, making them sort of straight lines. Some of these are quite big. So... Right, we'll go with that and see how we get on and if we need to pull in some other bits. So here we go. Gonna just have a quick little kind of Go for opposite corners. So 
see what we get. So just building up what we've got, not cutting anything down just yet, although I probably, probably will. Yeah, if we have that one that way, then we can have that one that way. I'm just putting things around, that's a bit too big. I'm not really sure if I like that. I think we'll stick to that bright side. We're quite it's quite a bright layout that's sort of happening here. So as we're sticking, things can get trimmed a little bit neater. I'm not thinking much about where things are going. I've got these thin strips that can be fitted in. Tiny little bits that can be fitted in to places. So that's that's a bit of something going on there. I'm actually thinking I want a bit of that yellow down here as well to balance out. So that is a first little experiment play where things might actually go and I'm because I'm going to sew around each bit I'm actually going to use a glue stick um, to stick them all down because it's it's quite easy to be using a glue stick and it's quite quick so I've got an old catalogue there do you know black's quite nice do you know what I might do I might chop that in half, vaguely, not totally, and do some black as well. So, just going to put glue stick all round. And stick it down. I'm going to try and get it right up to the edge of... And I'm just using credit card, you can use a bone folder just to put it down. 
if I wasn't stitching, so we haven't got a sewing machine, then I'd probably use some wet glue on it as well. I like the, um, so you can use a bone fold for this. I like that with a glue stick, you can get full coverage on the paper, but um, I would sort of go around the edges and, um, and that with some wet glue. Um, Um, if you're not sewing, but I'm going to sew. I like the look of stitches. We have a um, stitchery stamp set. So if you like the look of stitches, but you don't have a sewing machine, then you can always use a stamp set. To, or you can draw faux stitching. Although my drawn faux stitches look like a five-year-old's done it, so I tend not to do that. Um, getting glue. So because this is our design zero paper, it's quite thick, so you can like butt up to the edge quite well. I'm going to rip that down now because I've been using the same spot and it's uh, getting a nice gluey mess. So there we go. So I might, now you've kind of got the hang of what I'm doing. I'll just do this filling in the gaps bit. I'll speed it up in a minute. So we've got that. So we've got we've got a I can put that over there. It's gonna overlap a little bit there, but it doesn't matter. Don't matter if it overlaps slightly at all. So that's built up one little corner there quite nicely. And what I sometimes do is like there, I might butt that up there. So it's gone over those bits, but not quite gone to the end there. Um, I might do the stripy side on that. Um, and that way I fill in that. Otherwise, if I do that, I've got to find another strip down there, which I could do. I do have strips here, so I could put a strip in there to, to fill that. But I'm going to go that way and have that overlapping a bit there to fill that gap. So that's, that's it all stuck down. I say I give it a good rub on the back, as you saw, and that sort of helps the glue stick to sort of stick on the back. But I will be, as I say, sewing it. Um, but I would use liquid glue if you're not sewing it. So quite random, quite patchworky. Once it's sewn, it'll look really patchworky. Um, 
but I want to do some inking. So I'm going to give it a, a little bit of a, a vintage feel. So um, rather than ink round all the edges um, as I stick them down, I, I do it afterwards. So I take a bit of swaff, swaff, swaff suede, soft suede and my blending brush and uh, I go over all the edges and it picks up the edges. It also there picks up any glue that you might have got a bit messy with. And then that sort of tones down the brightness a bit as well. So where there was white, it's gone a bit vintagey. There we go. So quite like the look of that. And then sometimes what I do over the edges is use a bit of gesso um, as well to tone it back might use a bit of stamping on it because uh, I do like a little bit of random stamping so I'm gonna get some gesso so just some white gesso which oh, this has happened before this happened the last time I used it. I need to clean the lid because it can get a bit sticky if you're not careful. So the lid could probably do with a bit of a clean. So I've got a brush here that I've used. I didn't particularly clean it. It does have like a paper lid, but it's fallen in. So I'll just... Gonna go around the edges. Knocks back some of the colour. Brush it on, sort of dry brushed on a little bit, so you get this sort of distressed look about it. You could probably get the same sort of look with a bit of paints. When this is dry, I can then add some more ink to it. So it's giving it a little bit of a whitewash weather look, really. Depending on how you apply it, you'll get different, different looks. But it's sort of less bright and in your face now. So I'm not using much at all. I'll just add a bit on there on the side of the paper. It's picked up some of that inking that was on there as well. Okay, so used, used in that way, it's, um, I need to clean that. It sort of dries quite quickly. And then it will take your ink then, if you then go back over it, so it's, uh, not quite so white. Gives it a bit of a vintage, vintage look there to it. I would make sure this is dry before I added um, mine is pretty dry. So now I'm going to get some stamps out and stamp on it. 
So I've got some of my favourite stamps for doing vintage things. I love that stamp there. Got me splodges, got a little bit of worn type there. This one, my absolute favourite. Got there like a little bit of ledger. Got a label there, We've got a postmark. We've got um, a sort of a border there. This one has a splatter. So I'm gonna get those out ready. So there's all my stamps already. I've got soft suede, I've got early espresso, and I'm just gonna sort of stamp around really. I might do some dark ink splatters. Do some stamping on and stamping off. Um, might do a few labels. And I'm going to do it in different directions because it's all going to get cut up. We'll have a bit of a lightly postmarks. I may add some more. Now I'm going to change to soft suede. We'll do some dots. Pretty much all over. Um, I quite like the way this looks on things. Gonna have gonna do this randomly and partial, not even looking at where it's going. So we've got a bit there, a bit there, a bit there. Do the same with this. one as well. Gonna have a little bit more of a look see now where things are. hold it in my hand and then I'll get partial stamping this way to fill in gaps where I feel it might be needed. Do a few more postmarks. And that's it really. My 
right. Could add a bit more gesso again now. Or just do some more inking. Areas that I think are a little bit too bright. Yeah, so now I'm going to sew it. So there it is, all sewn round. You can see the patchwork on the back. Um, I think when I did the original, um, I cut it up first and then sewed round it. Because obviously when this is cut up, I'll have to sew round the edges again. Um, but I think I sewed these, I think, all individually and thought that that took a long time. So I decided to sew it all now and then uh, just sew around the edges once it's, once it's cut up. Uh, so you could at this stage now, if you're a card maker, you could m make cards. Um, but obviously I'm going to um, make uh, pockets and tags out of it. So I am just cutting this in half. So this is A4. Um, I know that half of A4 is about five and seven eighths, um, sort of. Um, so I usually cut it slightly shy of that. So there we go. Obviously, I've got to cut through thread here um, as well. So I did that and then I just kind of went, we'll have a pocket front about there. What do I do? About two and a half inches. About two and a half inches there. We'll go for a pocket front and say so I am because I sewed it I've got some threads there that I need to come in so that's one pocket front and then for this kind of just went slightly on the diagonal giving myself enough enough there's a pocket bottom so that's at that so we've got um two slanted pockets there and then what i did here i'm going to cut myself a two inch tag i might go slightly more because that's going to come straight up there so let's go for a two and a half inch that's going up there Mm, I don't like it. I don't like it. Go two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. Tag. Now I'm going to turn this on this side and just shy of three inches is like half of this. So that is those done. And I'm going to use, my tag topper for these. I'm thinking I might have that as the top. It's very busy there and there's lots of little ones, which is why I think I'm going to put that on the bottom. Um, this one doesn't really matter actually because I'm just going to cut that corner bit out. I don't want that at the top because that's a tiny little bit. So that is how we're having that. So I'm going to cut Am I going to cut it smaller? No, I'm just going to use this one. So we'll go No, I might go I'm going to go slanty edge 
and I've marked a mark there because I want it slightly smaller. I'm going to go halfway between that mark and there. I'm going to eyeball it. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So go to that mark, go about halfway for that tag. So I'm going to we're going to sew around the corner and we're going to sew around those two edges there. Um, and then this one, do that. All right. For that style. And then this one, we're going to go this way. So that's them done. I am, before I sew round my tags, I'm going to back these on to some other backing paper. Um, these I'm not going to because these are going to be pockets. They're fine as they are. Um, so they're ready to be sewn round. But these I want to back them. So I'm going to get... I'm going to get some brown packaging. Right, so I think I might use some of these for Christmas. So I am just going to stick this on here. Not got any ripped on the back, no. So I will be sewing. So as before going to use a glue stick I'm going to use some wet glue as well because this is a tag but I'm just gonna oh, like that and then I'm gonna go oh, long time since I used this had a day out yesterday in York, the six-year-old, and Ed, pretending to be a six-year-old. <laughs> it was great. Very tired, though. Forgotten what, what energy small people have. So. Stick that on there. Going to smooth it out a little bit. In a moment, just going to get these on. There we go. So now, I'm going to get my credit card. where we are getting a good smooth so having this brown back in gives us something to write on gonna get the big scissors out Probably should have waited. I always do this. Might have been better to wait until I'd stuck these on before I did my tag corners, but you know, I'm consistent with my bloopers. There we go. one's all right because it's flat I can just cut
And then I'll just give it a really good and there might be some bits around the edge where it's not quite stuck but it doesn't matter because I am sewing. That's got a little bit of a rough bit but I think that's quite a nice addition. So that's already, that's already. Let's do these tops again. Making sure I'm matching up the right tops. There we are. See, no drama. And I'm going to do a bit of inking around the edges because that's what I like to do. Do that before I sew. Not rounding the corners. So that's them all ready. So I'm just going to finish off the sewing. So they're all done and sewn round. Now, some of the tag edges were already sewn, but I sort of double sewed, like I double sewed that bottom because otherwise I wouldn't add sewing on the back. And I wanted to have sewing on the back of the tags, like why this way I double sewed the side there. Um, but you don't really notice it and i did there as well side and bottom that was two sides just to make sure i had it on the on the back of the front these are just went round where i went round because um you're not going to see the back because they're they're pockets so they can either be left as they are um or they can be decorated now um I am inclined to just leave that now until such time as I make a journal where I want to use them. But I think for finishing off the video, I might decorate one um, so you can see how they may they may look. Right, I just wanted to show you the mess that I get into when I'm kind of just like playing around, seeing what will work, and I create this sort of devastation. So I have... Um, put together a tag so I'm gonna show you how I did that but I'll just clean up a little bit first okay that didn't take very long at all so um I am using my Stampin' Up products with this I'm not using any digitals or anything like that so everything that I've done I've used um with Stampin' Up so I just sort of layering it up I thought a little kind of like a silhouette would look good I created my own little label there with the help of a die so I used the ranunculus dies um, so I've used that um, sprig of a one there so I've cut it in um, I cut it in cherry cobbler there I've cut it in black not cherry cobbler crumb cake it's two C's um, I cut the leaf out again um, I cut that out in crumb cake and then I've just given it a little bit of an ink and then these two I've cut out um, these are the meadow dies so I cut that one out with the meadow dies I cut the corn out here with nature's harvest I forget what this one's called harvest dies and I used the label out of this as well and that one's the harvest dies as well and I got the little circles with the tops here from the tailored tag um tailor-made tags and I got the love from love you more than and I just took the love from that which I thought looked quite well and then behind it because 
I felt it needed a layer behind and I, I'd probably use book page or um, um, music paper but as I'm trying to trying to use sort of stamping up I've got this lovely vellum and that's what I put behind it I think vellum's quite nice behind something because um, it's um, you can still sort of see through it so I just took a bit of that lovely vellum there go behind a little bit there that I tore off go behind there and it just sits there in the background and gives you kind of a nice little lift I've got some scraps there which I can use in another project so I'll just put this back so these are so you get so this is the the scripty one you've and you've got them in black and you've got them in white so this is the sort of maps on there got it in black there can you see got it in white and then you've got like the tight print there in white and there you can see it in black you can see the map there so nice nice little um nice little designs on there i quite like them um, so I just did a bit of inking, um, black obviously doesn't need inking, but I'm going to ink up my little bit of corn there, so just use my blending brush and that way I can get both sides of it, which you couldn't get with a dauber or, so that's cool. Then I'm going to ink round the edges of this. That's what I like to do. There we go. That's that's coolio. And then put that on there. And then I've already inked the leaf, so I'm just inking this one. that there nicely behind so that's the way they go and then to make my my label so I took a scrap of crumb cake um, I used that stamp there that I used before from Ranunculus Romance I've got Sahara Sand here because it's a little bit lighter and I'm just gonna Stamp it on there. Uh, I'm going to stamp it twice because I'm going to make two. And um, and then I just take that lovely shaped labels. Now I did these freehand, if you remember, if you watched my spiral bound um, journal. I did make these by hand, but when I was looking at these, I was like, oh, I've got that little got that little label I've not used that and this of course gives you a nice little edge as well so I am just gonna cut that out I might just bring in a little tabletop die cutter to do that because it's handy elbowed my water bottle there. <clears throat> so there is, don't know if you can see, the, uh, it's kind of beveled at the edge so the, the centre bit sticks up. You see it a little bit better when um, when it's inked so I'll just cut the other one so it's quite cool you can make a load of these or you can just cut them by hand but I do like the little detail that you get it's nice to have a few things that are slightly different in a stash so that's them don't need 
this anymore. That just lives up there on my shelf. Stuff that in there. Right, and I am going to just do a little bit of inking around the edges of that and it will just go on the edge. You got the nice sort of sticky up bit. I don't know if that's, I think you can see that the way it comes up a little bit in the middle. So I then matted it on black. Don't have to do that. And I might not do that with one of these, maybe the little one. I won't, although that's going against black. Mm -mm -mm. It's quite nice to have a bit of black. So, scrap of black um, somewhere. I have a scrap of black. I don't think that scrap's going to be big enough, is it? Oh, I think we will get away with it. So, just stuck it down. So, and then I'm using my long scissors. I might put my glasses on. I didn't put my glasses on when I did that one. I didn't do a bad job, but I thought afterwards I could have really done with my glasses. So, just go off in a straight line as much as possible. around it to create a label like that and then I could stamp on it I didn't do that very straight at all but it's a junk journal not bothered um, then I could stamp on it or die cut as I've as I've done that one, I might leave that one without. I might go around it in black. That will work. Um, maybe a little bit of black ink. So, I just need to glue this down. I'm going to use glue stick um, so that the glue's all over it. It's really hard with vellum to glue down so you can't see it. So I thought, I came up with this idea, maybe if I do it with a bit of glue stick, the whole lot's covered. And um, that might work. The fact that most of it's covered up anyway, I think that'll, I think that'll work. Right, so I've got that. Put my glue stick away now. I'm going to do the other one. Probably in time lapse. There we go. I just wanted to show you. Now, yeah, I'm going to put the black down first. Now you can, of course decorate anyway but you know lots of us have our dyes so it's just another way of using them quite light the sort of dramatic look of having something black on it love this leaf it's got some lovely detail in it I like it uh, stick that down. I haven't used it much actually, I forgot about it. So, I've got a few autumn projects to do. I might, uh, this leaf might just feature. Uh, 
stick that down there. Then I'm going to stick the label and um, decide what to put on it. I have got some retired words. I might use them. So I'm going to pop a word on in a minute. So to do the top, I just punched a hole with my smaller crocodile hole. I brought it for the middle. Put a bit of glue around it and stuck on the uh, black hole reinforcers. They cut four out at a time. So it's a handy little time saver. Can't pick it up. I'll pop that around there. And then do the same on the back. I haven't done any stamping on the back of um, this, these tags, which is I usually do. That slightly. Yeah. So I do like the look of that black one on the back because I've got the black stitching. Well, it's actually really very dark green, but it looks black. There we go. Nice little look there. So then our little ribbon is our black and white gingham ribbon. Um, which I have coloured. So I'm just going to snip that there. So I got a light soft suede blend, stamping up alcohol markers. And I just went over it so it just coloured the white so that it so that it matches. Don't have to do both sides, it's probably enough to go through, but just am. Um, there we go. And it uh, doesn't take long to dry because it's alcohol. She says doing that and it was still wet. And then I'm just fold it in half. Poke it through from the back. Push the tails in, pull it up, and then just neaten that tad. And that's that. So, all we're missing there is um, a word. So I'm going to put this together in the same way and um, get some words. So I've finished them off. I decided to stamp them in the end. I looked at the other word die words I had and I didn't like them. So I've put that one together and I stamped anything as possible. I decided that I did want to put a little black board around it. And then I stamped on that one, which stamping on something that's stuck down and it's not even it's not really a good idea but i think i did all right so that is my tags and um yeah i'd probably do some decorating on the pockets that one fits nicely in that one that one in that one and then that one could go in that one and yes i say i'd put some decorating on the pockets but i'm not going to do that um in the video it kind of just waiting to see what what um what journal i'll i'll put it in but you know just a 
another way of, of scrap busting. None of those papers kind of came from the same set or anything. They're all very random. And, um, but I think it worked out quite well. Got a block there in that colour, which I might do it that way around and, and cover that up a little bit. Not really sure. I like that block there, but you know, you can play with it. Oh, yeah, I don't even mind the really bright green, which isn't my favourite colour, but that's sort of stuck out there. Um, but yeah, so hope you like that idea. Hope you give it a go. Um, and um, I'll be with you again very soon with a, another project. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Link down below to my shop where I'm and you can see everything I've used. It's a link to my Buy Me A Kofi site if you wish to help support my channel so I can carry on um, buying stuff to bring you videos. Thank you very much. See you again soon.